That's B between high. I was 13, Will Smith was eight. We try to picture this, all right? This is a long time ago. Maybe, yeah. so anyway, we'll be playing that sport. It was called stickball. You take a stick, a regular stick, like from a mop or something, and they throw a tennis ball. That was big for that time. And you play wall ball against the, or whatever. But anyway, stickball was big. And I think about it, I told the story to a lot of people. I never told it on camera. But it was like, at that time, if you was a ghost, you're only 23. But imagine in the late 70s, you could fly through here as a ghost. And you see like six, seven little black kids playing stickball. And somebody told you one of them would be a superstar one day. One would commit murder. And one would commit suicide. And one be telling the story. But you know out of the six, seven kids, which one was rich? You wouldn't. And But the thing I remember playing stickball was... I would hit a home run, and my ego is like really big because um, I was spoiled as a kid. That's the only one with my mom, and I'm not getting into that right now. But um, and I grew up around pretty much in the white environments a lot too, so I'm kind of like that's what you call Oreo when I was younger because I could I could identify with both cultures. But we live in a society that's very separate and unequal. We know that. I'm not gonna harp on that. That is kind of negative after a while. People get tired of it. White people feel it's guilt. Black people is just mad. I won't be either one. I just like it's wrong what happened. But we still got to progress. But anyway, I'm playing stickball, and and I hit the home run, and people are like, yo, still, yo, and I'm like, I feel like now, like Hollywood, you can feel the energy reciprocated. And if I strike out, uh, I would get like sad. And I still do that when, when things don't go my way. I get depressed, and I remember I strike out and doing, still, you suck. You got big eyes. I'm like, mm, you know. So, and then I remember Mitchell. Uh, I don't know if I should say his name. He was cool. I used to go over his house all the time. He was a little kid. But he grew real big. This is what my dad told me. He went to prison for murder. And he'd be over there playing with us, too. And I don't know. He was cool with me. I, was, I met with my ex-girlfriend, um, Natasha. He was, he was working at Whole Foods, so he must have got out of prison. He always gave me respect. But uh, I didn't say his last name, so it's cool. Another guy is my best friend. His name is Robert Avery Davis. He lived right down the street, um, right, two houses up from my dad. He was a year older than me. He graduated from Overbrook. He was a Marine Corps. He was a platoon leader. And, but he killed himself over his wife. His wife was cheating. And my dad told me he got the same name. That really took him out. I couldn't believe he did that. So it'd be me, Butch, uh, Mitchell, it'd be uh, uh, and Will Smith. And Will Smith, he didn't hit home every time. I know he's all like, oh my, I, I, he's my favorite celebrity other than Harvey. But he would hit home run and then, Will, Willard, yo, you did good. And he would strike out and he went, Will, you suck, you got big ears. He said, your mother got big ears. And at eight years old, you know what I'm saying? He was always confident. So, well, my whole point is, this is a documentary I saw years ago called 28 Up. The way you are as young is the way you are when you get older. And that's true, so true. But I just want to show, I talk about Will Smith all the time. Natasha, all my girls got tired, co-workers got tired of it. And Will don't, honestly don't give a damn about me. He don't know I exist. But he know me, a couple of times I saw him since he's been famous, he's like giving me respect. He's a real cool dude. And I'm pretty sure he could help me if he knew I was really just hungry to be, not so much to be like famous, famous, like Peter kiss my butt. I think my creativity is good enough to be famous. I've been around Harvey. I've been around, I ain't gonna, I'm Helm, Will Smith. And my whole life I've been a off. So it's kind of, I'll make this quick. I know Mo, I didn't want to talk too long like my other videos. That's the house the Red Door Will Smith grew up. The world goes on, nothing's changed. But to me, just being in this area at this time, it made me happy to make this video. And I had to tell this story because Will Smith is who he is. I am who I am. Mitchell, he was out in prison, but that's what my dad told me. My dad told me a lot of stuff. I don't know if it's true or not. But um, the famous story I told about Will Smith got yeah, spanked because my dad went to that house. And I'll already explain in another video. But anyway, thanks, Mo, once again. I decided to do that. It makes me happy to make these videos. It's like therapy. Let me explain that real quick. Most people don't express themselves. We live in a world where we hide our feelings. Something about being in Hollywood and being show off as a kid, I feel good. It's like therapy. And I noticed that in Hollywood, it's like a haven for creative people. It's like, and then you can find all kinds of people from Marilyn Monroe. She's a foster care from uh, all kinds of celebrities had issues before they got famous. But it is therapy because you people, the energy that you give, you get back. And it's just positive energy. Work world, I love working with you, Mo. You're a cool guy. You're young, good energy, and you're fun to be with. Work is where it is. We're ambulance drivers. We take people who are sick and dying. So I try to cheer up people that, uh, and this, real quick, I know I said I'm making it short, but let me tell you this one story. It's kind of, it doesn't sound professional. It wasn't in this company. But one time, I get two care away I'm real personable. So I'm talking to a lady. You got pictures. She's 80 years old. She's on dialysis. Her kids are somewhere, I don't know. But she liked me because I was always joking with her. I joke with her a lot, but you see it all the time. I'm real personal. But anyway, so one time, we got so friendly, I was telling her, I don't know how I came up the conversation. I told her a porn joke, Okay. Now, you got pictures, she's 80 years old, going to uh, dialysis. 
and this is a different company and she got she laughed so much but the guy who was driving i can't remember who it was but he got mad he went back and told him and his he called me in the office and said why did you tell a porn joke to a patient i said i told a porn joke and the person laughed and the person you think she's 80 going to houses and her family's not there i made her laugh that's the whole point of all this that's the whole point not so much being religious not so much being on black or certain age do you make people laugh do you make the world better or do you make people feel worse and man, I told you earlier about angels and demons. Now, nah, I don't get caught up in all that stuff a thousand years ago. But I do believe that our souls or who we are, our, our behavior, angels are demonic. If you can make people feel better or you can make people feel worse. And the demons are the ones that make people feel worse. But anyway, I said a lot real quick. And I just spontaneous. I didn't write anything down. I'm just so happy we're in the area to see Will Smith's house. Not that he gets a damn about me, but <laughs> who knows? He was a cool dude. And, um... Know him as a kid and know him since he's been famous. Often here and there, I saw him here and there. He's a real cool dude. And uh, if you see this, Will, I'm still trying. It's not so much for my ego, it's for my creativity, it should be acknowledged just like yours was and still is. And that's it, Mo. I don't know what else more to say. Thank you very much again.